Hello, this is Daniel, and I want to talk to you about setting user and group permissions within the Windows environment. This is Windows XP, but it really looks about the same in uh, Windows 7 and all the Windows Server editions, as long as you're using a professional server or enterprise edition. We're going to start by going to Control Panel, then clicking on Administrative Tools, then Computer Management. From there, click on Local Users and Groups, then click users. Here you can create new users for this computer. As you can see I've already set up CEO, cleaning lady, mail clerk, and payroll as a user. And in addition to that I've created groups. You can do that by right clicking and clicking new group. You can create new users by right clicking in the user menu and clicking new user. I already have a group set up for the payroll group. Now I need to add some users. So I'm going to add the CEO. I'm also going to add payroll. I have another group called employees which contains all four users within our company. I've got another group called peons which contains just the cleaning lady and the mail clerk. Now let's see what we can do with these permissions. Open up my computer. In my case I've created a directory on the C drive called Company Documents. It contains three subdirectories. We're now going to set the permissions for each of these directories so we can control access to specific groups or users. I'm going to start with the CEO's personal file directory because obviously he wouldn't want anyone looking at his personal stuff. I right click on that, click properties, click the security tab, and then we can add permissions. I'm going to click add, I'm going to add a user this time. The username is CEO. Click OK. It defaults to read only. We're going to give him full access to his own files. And click apply. We're also going to add the peon group. Okay, now that we've done that, we can set permissions. We're going to deny them all access or even the ability to list the folder contents. Next, we're going to set up payroll. This is going to be pretty similar. Let's we'll start by adding the payroll group. Set up permissions for them. They need full access. We'll add the peons again. And once again, we're going to deny them access. Now the employee manuals we're going to do a little bit differently. This time we're going to add the group that contains all employees. Remember, you can have groups that overlap each other. Just be careful, because sometimes the permissions for each group uh, will overlap and could create some issues. So be careful when you have a user in more than one group. We're going to allow them to read the employee manuals, but not change them. So we're going to let that stay on the default of read only. Now I can log in as different users and we'll test and see if our permissions worked. Okay, I'm now logged in as Cleaning Lady. Once again, let's browse to the Company Documents directory. Let's see what I have access to. Payroll Documents. Access is denied. CEO's Personal Files. Access is denied. Employee Manuals. Oh, there we go. Manual text. Shirt and shoes required. Hmm. Seems a little strict. Shirt and shoes not required. I'll just save that. Access is denied, which is exactly what we set up when we set our permissions. 
Okay, I'm now logged in as CEO. So once again, let's go back to our company directory. Let's see if he has access to his own files, which he does, and the payroll documents, which he has access to as well. This demonstrates the importance of setting permissions for individual users, especially in a large company setting. You don't want everyone to be able to access everything or you will have chaos. You can create users, and more importantly, you can create groups to give everybody exactly how much access they need and no more.